Um, I just wanted to start with a, a couple of pictures of uh, some work that I've been doing around school. Um, and here are some ceramic tiles, something that I've never tried before, so drawing into ceramics. Um, and that was really good fun. It's a totally different way for me to work and just, you know, kind of a really different feel with the clay and it's something really tangible. So that, that was really good fun. Um, it's not often you're allowed to kind of tag around school or, or, or draw on windows. I still actually don't know if I'm allowed, so, um, <laughs> you know, I just thought I'll do it and ask questions later. But this is in the Frost building, so if you walk between the building now, you know, keep an eye out for this piece on the glass. Um, there's also a couple of other pieces there in cases. So you might have, you know, if you've been around this week and you've walked through the Frost building, you might have noticed the the installation there and and uh, so I, it's it's been it's been good fun being invited here and you know having the chance to kind of build in a space and and draw a lot um, so let's go right up here so for some of you that um, I've met already and I see some familiar faces you know you, you're a little familiar with um, with my talk I, I'm gonna change it up a little bit but you know it's always good to um, start with a quiet scene um, it's, uh, I, I live in, in Brooklyn, and we don't have much of these trees. <laughs> um, we don't have much of this, you know. Uh, we definitely don't have big sky. Uh, we don't have all this green grass. And uh, where are the people? Where are the buildings? You know, I kind of want to draw the people and the buildings and the planes and uh, the noise and the lampposts and the police, and, and then I'll feel at home. And then I can relax on this bench. <laughs> um, but it's been really nice being uh, in Vancouver and, and really enjoying uh, some of the nature here and, and, and uh, the people. And um, I'm not going to say the food, but, um, it's <laughs> but the nature's definitely been really nice. Um, so when I, when I talk um, and introduce my work, as some of you know, I like to show this picture of me and my brothers and sisters and you can probably guess which one is me, yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, no, this is me. Um, and I like to show this picture because, you know, it just gives us a clean slate. It, it's, it starts from the beginning and it shows you that things aren't always what we think they are at first. You know, we're normally bringing our own assumptions or projections to the table. Uh, this is uh, all my brothers and sisters and uh, I'm, I'm not adopted or anything, just have a different dad. and which allowed me to have a cooler hair than my, my brothers and sisters. Um, and it's funny now, I have um, six nieces and nephews now, so there's this blonde, blue-eyed tribe. So when I go to London and I hang out with them all, and it looks like I've kidnapped them, and you know, <laughs> it's like, who's this crazy woman with brown hair? And yeah, so, so that's fun. And, and I really like kind of um, being being different in that way to my family. I, I, you know, I live abroad, I'm an artist, I'm traveling, I'm doing something that no one else in my family does. So now when I go and see my nieces and nephews, I'm like, hello, like you can come to New York and visit me. You can do art too. You can be different if you want to. And I feel like um, growing up and looking a little bit different allowed me um, now to kind of be who I am and, and, and do the work that I do. And uh, I, I really, I found this picture. I was looking for uh, pictures of um, Thamesmead. Uh, let's write that in there. Does anyone know Thamesmead? Some of you do now. But uh, Thamesmead, it's in southeast London. And it's, um, you know, it was one of those kind of utopia uh, housing projects that they built in the late 1960s. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of meant to be futuristic. There's all these bridges and nothing's on the ground floor. It's all one level up for safety and uh, to protect against flooding. And you can walk miles from here to here to the school here to the hospital here and, you know, keep going. And it was a really interesting place growing up. Um, you know, it wasn't one of these places. It, it started off with really good intentions, but it ended up being what you call um, like a sink place. So all the councils from different parts of the UK that had problem families would kind of dump them there. Um, and then over the years, from the late 60s to when I was, 
you know, growing up, there was definitely a mixture of, of crazy families and tribes and people living there. So that was also an interesting place to grow up and very, very fun. You know, as a kid, you can climb up here and hide up in the flats and um, you can knock, on, knock down ginger, but you go in the elevator at the top and then you bang down all the way to the bottom and then you get chased out and <laughs> have to run. And I was talking to a guy here who said, oh, I used to do that, but we did it in the mountains where I lived over there. So, you know, it's kind of, you play the same games as a kid, but in different environments. Um, some of you might know Misfits. So, um, yep. So Misfits was filmed in, in Thamesmead. For those that don't know Misfits, this was also filmed in Thamesmead, a lot of it, Clockwork Orange. Um, so it was definitely an interesting place to grow up and kind of led me to St. Martin's. Um, for those that aren't familiar with St. Martin's, it's a very famous art school in London, um, in central London. Alexander McQueen, Jimmy Choo, Vivian Westwood, you know, uh, a lot of the bigger design advertising founders came out of there. So it has a big reputation. So somehow from, you know, a kid, I, I, I managed to... Uh, take myself to this school and um, I think I got there because someone told me not to apply to a previous school so I did and I got in and then at that school they told me not to apply at this school because you won't get in so of course I applied and I got in um, so you know if people tell you not that you can't do it then just keep doing it uh, this is kind of some of the work that I was doing at St. Martin's a lot more street, a lot more kind of uh, going out at 4 a.m., drawing on the walls of London. Uh, I guess I, I was around 19, 20, 21. Probably not the uh, happiest 19, 20, 21 year old that you've met. I don't know if you do meet any happy 19, 20, 21 year olds. <laughs> Maybe there are some in here. Um, but I wasn't very happy and, and this was the kind of characters that I would um, write up on the walls. And it's funny actually, I was in London uh, last year and I found one um, from you know almost 10 years ago hiding behind one of these boards but that was my character then um, and then I was at St. Martin's from about 2000 to 2003 and then around that time I, I graduated St. Martin's and, and, and what the hell do you do when you, you finish art school you're like uh, okay now I have an art degree I'm gonna I don't know um, so I decided to move to Japan. I had a lot of Japanese friends, so I moved to Japan. Um, I started to teach English there. And then slowly I got involved in, in the, the art scene in Japan. And this is me when I'm younger. This is me when I'm, I'm 23, 24. I'm, I got a little chubby in Japan. I, don't tell, I got some chubby cheeks there it's from all the good food. But, um, but living in Japan at, at that age and at that time, um, I couldn't really do the, the work that I was doing, you know, in London and going out and drawing on the walls and trains. And I also didn't feel like I had the right to, you know. Um, London, that was my city, you know, I was angry in London and London was my city so I could write on London and tag it if I wanted to. But I didn't feel like I had that, um, the right to do that in Japan. So the, the work that I did changed and I started to draw in these kind of fold out accordion books. Um, and here's, here's a page of those. They're about seven feet long. I have a picture up here. And, um, you know, some of you have been lucky enough um, in Sentinel's class, we, we took one of these books and we got to, we got to mess with it. There you go. So this one's been scanned and made black and white, but you can see kind of the ideas and, and the quality of the line that was there. And for me, these were almost diaristic, you know, people that I was meeting, uh, things that I would see. I would try to draw things realistically, for example, Ah, oh, I'm going to draw this temple, and I drew the stairs, and then I thought, oh, actually, the top of the temple is too difficult for me. I'll just draw a little house. Um, and then uh, these are the, the pillows that are at the bottom of the temple, and I kind of started daydreaming and gave them feet and put a little person in there.
And they kind of go on and on and on and on. So um, at this time of living in Japan uh, and, and not doing the work that I did in, in London and starting to draw in, in this style, I got asked to uh, do some live drawing at an event. And um, you know, live drawing at an event with music normally means that you have the, the painter drawing there and they're painting or, or drawing really large and then you have the band playing there. But for me, there, there isn't, um, there's like a disconnection from when you have the, the artist here and the musician there. So I decided to combine the two. And uh, you'll find that over here. So I made this, uh, this presentation like a maze for me, so it keeps me on my toes. So I'm like, where is it? OK, there we go. So you can see here, here's my, my sketchbook is under here. I've got some post-it notes as props. I've got a pen here. Um, and, and I'm drawing under a camcorder, or here it's called a visual presenter. So it's capturing what I'm doing here, and it's projecting it behind here. So behind the musicians, um, and then I'm drawing in real time. And I could also you know, bring my hands into the picture and collaborate with dancers. I'll show you a little, a little video of what that looked like in person. Might turn it down, it could be a bit noisy. <laughs> Not the kind of music you listen to on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Let's just fast forward there so you get an idea of how it develops. Okay, it's probably safer to stop there. Um, but so, so I started to do, um, you know, at first I said, well, I'd rather draw in this style, you know, it, keeping the same size and style that I'm drawing in and under a camcorder. Because, you know, instantly when we have screens and visuals in the same place, we connect the two and it makes more sense for me. And I fell into this kind of underground Japanese noise scene. And like I say, this isn't the kind of music that I listen to at home. So what happened is that I, I discovered, wow, I'm a performer. And what I mean by that is that when you're drawing to this kind of music, it's, it's very difficult to be comfortable and, and stick to what you know. Because if you're really, really wanting to listen to this music, you have to switch off in the sense that if you want to create visuals to it. So by performing to these kind of shows and musicians, I realized that I started to switch off and not think and just do. And there's also a thing where there's, um, when you're performing and there's an audience waiting for you, you can't afford that time to think about what am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? What if the music changes now? What should I do to that music? You can't think about that. You just have to do. And then here you can see I'm, I'm bringing my hands in there. I'm moving the paper. Um, I'm going crazy. They've all got long hair. They're going crazy. Um, so that was good fun. And, Only in Japan. <laughs> so that was good fun. And, and I started to do a lot of shows like that, a lot of shows to Japanese underground and noise music. And eventually, over the years, it, it developed into um, doing it to um, digital, like techno music in clubs, to DJs. And, and here is a show where I use you know, one projector, two projector, three projector, four projectors here. And you know, when the DJ's playing, I would zoom in, zoom out, move it around, go crazy. If, if the, the crowd were going, yeah, 
you know, I could write, yeah, <laughs> something like that, you know. Um, I can't spell, but I can draw. Um, so that would be fun. And so I, I performed like that for a long time. And sometimes I would experiment, you know, here's one tablet, here's two computers, here's another tablet. And here I decided, OK, I'll use my left hand and my right hand. And as you can see, it doesn't really work, because this is my left hand. And Nothing really happened there. Um, so sometimes it didn't work. I, I would uh, collaborate with uh, dancers and um, other kind of musicians instead of DJing. So here's a, a Japanese dance and drum band called Muhei. And they were pretty fun. I've got a little clip up here to show you. And I'm not sure if you can see here, but I'm also experimenting. There's a screen at the front and then screens at the, um, behind, just to give it that extra 3D feel. You know, one thing about visuals is that they're, they're usually in a box, and uh, I try to break that as much as I can with some depth. So that was good fun. And you can see here that I discovered, hey, you know, the person's in the picture. I can draw around them and I can draw on them. And then that also turned into um, a whole kind of um, show that I used to do, drawing on and around the audience. Um, these pictures I, I mentioned to uh, a, a few of you in class, um, and I had a, a picture of um, a Japanese friend, you know, um, standing there very quietly, and I could draw around them and on them. And this friend, I would say, stand there for two to three minutes, and then I would draw their kind of moving, hidden aura. Uh, this is what happens in America when you ask an American to stand still for <laughs> two or three minutes. It's impossible. So, um, so when I brought this idea to America, it became more of an interaction piece. Um, so more of a, a collaboration rather than me drawing on them. So that was, that was good fun to see how culturally your work can change also. Um, so we'll go back to the digital shows. Um, I guess time-wise, you know, I, I'm, we'll go back. I moved to Japan 2003, started to do the analog visuals in around 2005. Um, digital around 2006, seven. Um, and these uh, ones in America are probably done in around 2009. But going back to America after, um, to Japan, after my shows, um, people would come up to me and be like, ah, sumasen, choto, sign choda ii desu ka? Like, ah, can, you, can I get your signature? Um, kind of, they'll be anywhere. Doko demo ii yo? Like, anywhere is okay. On my face, on my arm, anywhere. And uh, so I would draw on them. And then this turned into a collaboration of drawing on my fans and having different photographers take pictures of them. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, this is more of the Japanese style hidden aura. Some more drawing on people. Right behind here is one of the first um, body drawings I did on a person. And this was all done with permanent marker. And uh, it was on her for about four days. And um, so that was interesting. 
And I don't know if any of you know Jordan, but I also draw on his face with permanent marker. Um, and I've been photographing him as it rubs off slowly each day. So that's been interesting. So that was fun. Um, and then around in you know, 2008, towards the end of 2008, I thought, OK, I've had a really good career in Japan. I've, um, I've, you know, I have residencies now in club. I've developed this whole way of doing visuals, using a drawing tablet. I'm doing J-pop videos. I'm, I've released a DVD. Uh, a lot of people recognize my style. Hey, why don't I quit and leave it and, and move somewhere else? You know, it, it kind of felt like it was too comfortable. You know when things are too comfortable, you, you, you flatline a little bit creatively? So that's what was happening to me. So I, I went to New York for a holiday. And like anyone that goes to New York for a holiday, you get there and you're like, oh my god, I love it. I'm going to move here. Then you move there, and then you say, oh, crap, what did I just do? <laughs> Why isn't it like it was when I came on holiday? You know, it's, it's a totally different ball game. So I, I moved to New York from Japan. Um, uh, I spent the, the last of my money uh, on an immigration lawyer and, you know, the fly and, and everything, and kind of turned up to New York like that cliche, you know, no money, sleeping on my friend's couch. Um, sleeping on another friend's couch, trying to figure out how I do what I was doing in Japan in New York. I thought I would just turn up and I would just be a big superstar and do what I was doing in Japan in New York. But then I realized, hey, everyone's an artist in New York. No one really cares who you are unless they know who you are. And the whole kind of uh, career that I just built up in Japan around digital visuals in clubs to music and DJs and dancers and musicians doesn't exist in New York yet. So I got there um, and it, it was pretty tough. So I think I, uh, I, I struggled for about a year, a year and a half, almost two years. Um, I struggled to struggle and, and uh, until I finally thought, that's it, I'm going to give up. Uh, I'm going to get out of New York. And I went for a, a a short vacation to Sedona in Arizona. <laughs> and uh, I remember just being out, uh, you know, similar to here, big sky on the top of a red mountain. And I had this epiphany like, wow, I don't actually have to be in New York. Wow. You know, sometimes you, you, you push yourself into a box and, and you're struggling so hard to struggle that you you forget to see that there's a way out, or you forget why you went there in the first place. So when I, when I started to think about, hey, I don't need to be in New York, I realized that I could leave, and I realized that I didn't have to struggle. And then I remembered why I went there and why I was struggling. It was to go there for the opportunities to meet people, to, um, to take my artwork there, and to you know, not be flatlining creatively, to push myself in other ways. So I decided not to wait for anyone. I wasn't going to wait for someone to come and offer me a show. I wasn't going to come and wait for a gallerist. I wasn't going to wait for anyone. I was just going to be proactive and do what I knew how to do. So I got on the phone. I, I called some friends that I knew that had spaces. And I'd be like, hey, can I do a show in your space? Can I do a show in your space? Can I do a show in your space? So I started to do these little shows, you know, kind of um, like the, the, the hidden aura stuff, drawing on people and, and around them. And I, I would do these in shows, uh, little venues, and people would tell people, and they, those people would tell people, and those people would tell people. New Yorkers are very good about talking about things. They're, they're just very good about talking in general. So if you do something for people to talk about, they'll talk about it. And people started to talk about it enough that it started to come back to me, and I started to get job offers. And, and then MoMA called me and said, hey, can we hire you to do a performance? And um, as some of you know, Gossip Girl called me and said, hey, can we give you a mini cameo on, the, 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 on Gossip Girl? And I said, what's that? And you know, <laughs> they said, it's a TV show on CW something. I said, sure, I'll take it. Um, so I started to do uh, different projects and, and started to, to build up a network as well. Another thing that I um, also started to do is, is draw more on objects. So drawing on, on cars um, and jeans and, and shoes and clothes. Um, this is uh, from a collection of, of 20 sweaters that I did. And they're all drawn with uh, a permanent pen. 
So it, it's not a fabric marker, it's a permanent pen. So it, it, it does wash off eventually. But if you buy one of these, you can either choose to wear it and enjoy it, or you can frame it and be precious over it. And, and I, I tell you, I'd rather you enjoy it. So I started to, to draw on a lot more objects, and you know, here's a dress. And, and that was really fun, and I feel like that's something that wouldn't have happened in Japan. Um, and, and as some of you know, uh, this is my bedroom in Brooklyn, where I've drawn over all the walls and on my bed, and I have these bottles here, and uh, that's my little office. And now my office is all drawn on too. Um, this is the laundry room. Uh, another shot of, of the bedroom. And, and that ended up being on the cover of New York Times, um, which was you know, pretty amazing. And so I, I, that also built up my confidence. And, and I decided, OK, um, you know, I'm using what I have access to. And, and I also started to remember, hey, I'm a performer. I'm, and uh, because I started to draw on a lot more objects, I started to also draw on a lot more walls and tangible things in public. So here's a big wall drawing that I did. I probably did it in, a, you know, I think three hours total time, and, and that was good fun. And this one, um, you'll see from a later photograph online, but I would meet people, and I'd ask them who they were, and I would write their names in here. So by the end of the, end of the time that this drawing was finished, it was full up of names. And, you know, there's this thing about, art being something that you can't touch, you know, art being something very precious, or the artist being someone that you don't have contact to, you know, them being someone super important and distant and, and someone that um, it's kind of impossible for you to even talk with them. So I'm, I'm trying to make it my mission to, to uh, throw that out the window. I try and talk to as many people as possible. I, I, I ask them who they are. I try and include people into my work by writing their names in there or, or some other ways. And it's amazing when you have those little connections, you're at this art fair with you know, artwork that costs thousands of dollars, hundreds and thousands of dollars around you, and you just say, hey, what's your name? And they say, Lisa. And you, you put their name on the wall, and they're like, wow. <laughs> And then they take a picture, and then, you, and then you see this smiley, happy person walk away. So there's something really special about you know, making art tangible and, and making art a connection. And I feel like going back to Japan um, you know, and doing these visuals, what I did is, instead of the visuals being the background, by drawing them live, I made them the foreground. And then by bringing my audience into the visuals, I made them the work. It's also like by drawing on people, I made them the work. It's really amazing to draw on someone and see your work walk away. It's really amazing to draw on a car and see your artwork drive away. Um, it's really amazing to draw on people's shoes and see the shoes disappear. And you know that they're probably going to get wet and rained on, and, but you know that people are going to enjoy them. So that's really important for me and, and my work. And um, it's been fun hanging out in the lobby there and meeting people. Uh, this is um, a, a piece that I did in, in October in Brooklyn. And I'd never done a, a, a drawing this big before. And it, I remember walking out into this space and being like, whoa, that's so big. What if I mess up? Um, and then I remember telling myself, ah, oh, it's all one big mistake. It's all one big mess. Just enjoy it. So I, I, I got the spray paint. Uh, which I haven't used since, you know, back in London, uh, 10 years earlier, maybe even longer, 13. And I just started spraying. And the thing about working at this scale is that it's only movement. You know, when you're drawing like this and you're drawing, you can do that with your right hand and with your left hand. So this outdoor piece I did with my left hand and my right hand. It was also because after about 15 minutes, my right hand really ached. And I was like, wow, how do these like, graffiti people do this? You know? And then so I picked up it and, and used it with my left hand. Uh, some of you have seen this is my, uh, this is my grandmother over here. This is uh, Dot Martin, and she's my employee. And uh, we've been working on uh, collaboration pieces together. So I'll send her some instructions, you know, like, uh, dear. 
dear Gran, please sew me uh, 10 yous and me in black and white. And she sews them and she posts them back to me. Uh, and we've been working on, on a, a, a collaboration now, mainly word-based. And um, the question that I'm pretty obsessed with, some of you have the stickers now, who are you? So my, my, I asked her, you know, please sew me, who are you? She sews me that, she posts it back to me, and I also get who you are. I was like, that's strange. I didn't ask for who you are, but okay. Um, I asked her to, to do me as you were, so in black and white. So she sewed it for me, she posted it back to me in New York, and I also get as you are. And I was like, my nan's an awful employee. She doesn't do what I ask. Um, she did me a lost and a found. I lost the lost and found the found. Uh, this is a half white 1980. And I asked for the same but inverted. And uh, I like these kind of almost, well, accidental mistakes here. Uh, it looks like half while 1980 because the, the T looks like an, an L. Um, uh, this is more of a recent one. I asked for wonder what in any color, any size. And she sewed me wonder what, but I think she was wondering why, because because uh, <laughs> I also got wonder why in the post. So that's that's been really fun and, and has uh, in, enabled me to um, get a little bit closer to um, my family. And you know, my sisters will email me or Facebook me and be like, you know, grandmother's finished it. She wants to know if you want her to post it or whatever. And I. I email them back and say, don't post it. The USPS is awful. I don't, I'll come to London and pick it up, um, which is true. I'm, I'm, don't use the USPS. Fl flights are better. Um, this is an installation I, I did in Hong Kong in, uh, in October where I drew on, um, I drew live in these installations that I designed there. And we had this in a huge shopping mall where there's a train station, a bus station, a hotel, a supermarket, um, all the shops you can imagine. And then that was really fun. And then we did like a fashion show um, and, you know, had all the models walk around the, the, the big handbag design there. A couple of other projects um, that I, I've been working on, you know, is shoes. I, I love drawing on shoes. Like I say, I. I like drawing on things that walk away with you. And I've started to collaborate with some brands. So here's a, here's a piece. I, I, I did a video piece for Nike ID. Um, they played that in the store for eight weeks. And then from the video piece, we did a, a book cover. And then this shoe, which came with a USB stick. So you could watch the video piece, have the book, and then have the shoes. So it wasn't, you know, just just like a shoe thing. It, it still had some personality in there. Um, this is a random picture, but this is me in, in Carson's class, um, messing with ink for the first time. So it's kind of nice, you know, coming from, from these very uh, kind of commercial projects and then just being in the classroom back at school, getting messy. Um, another thing that I've been working on recently is um, different ways of, of doing drawing. And I'm going to show you some experiments that I've been working on with uh, a friend called Zach Lieberman, who programs um, drawing sketches for me. So for example, I say to Zach, um, what if we work on a, a little drawing sketch that takes line and sound? So he'll code something and send it to me and it'll look like this. <laughs> so we've been working on a whole bunch of, um, of these little sketches and, and, you know, some with sound or, or um, I have, you know, I'm obsessed with continuous lines. So we've worked on some which express the continuous line. So for this one, I draw a line and it forever repeats itself. It just, any line that I draw will 
add itself to the end of the line previously drawn. Let's find another one. Can I see you random? Okay, there we go. And this one, it, it takes a line and over time randomizes it. So I like working on these ideas of, you know, line, um, it can be other things as well. It doesn't have to be this static thing that stays and never moves. Um, so I, I like working and collaborating with people that are able to code and draw things. And, you know, these are very um, early sketches, but we can use these further down the line to make really um, awesome drawing or performance tools that everyone can use. Let's just show one more random one on there. Um, springs. So this one gives it a really soft feel. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you my favorite. Sorry, one more. Three D. So with three D, I can draw, and then I can change the the axis or the the drawing in space. So I can essentially draw in three D. And these are very good for long flights. <laughs> <laughs> I usually have the people next to me going, what are you doing? Because <laughs> you can uh, you know, zoom in. and So that's fun. And, and that's something that I've, I've been working on um, for, for a little bit and, and collaborating. And, and um, I, have a, I teach a class at NYU and my students are also developing their own drawing software. Um, so it's also fun for me to be able to test their software and, and perform with my student software. And, and some of their ideas are, are really, really amazing. Who are you? Who, who's got a sticker? Cool. They're, they're, they're pretty much gone, but uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a question that um, I've been asking myself a lot. And, and some of you might have seen this quote around. But uh, here's a quote from that bad magazine called Cosmo. <laughs> um, but it just says, on, on the back of my bedroom door, I have multiples of the words, who are you? I see these right after I wake up every morning. They make me think about what I want to achieve that day, what kind of person I am, and what kind I wish to be. And they make me ask myself, am I being me? And I, I have these words and I give out these stickers because I feel like it's, it's so easy to try and be someone else. And, and for, the, for the most part, there's so many people out, out there trying to get us to be someone else or to buy into the idea of being someone else. And, and we forget that you know, there's so much power in being you and, and being comfortable with who you are and um, through that, just really putting out your own style and identity and personality. And then you get to share that awesomeness with, with other people who are being themselves. So it's kind of, I feel like I'm on this little, uh, like, who are you campaign. And, and I'm looking forward to going over and seeing my brothers and sisters and giving them little who are you stickers and, and my nieces and nephews. and. Um, this is, a, this is a fun picture. I, I also remember that I can't please everyone. Um, and you shouldn't try, you know, just try and please yourself. And as a default, other people mostly, you know, 
two out of three time, they'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll be happy. Cool. Um, so at right now, I just want to see if there's, there's any questions. Um, I don't like shading. <laughs> um, I'm actually, uh, something else that I'm learning to do now is, um, is tattooing. And, uh, and all my tattooing is very similar to my drawing. It's, it's, it's a lot of line work. And I feel like that's, that's what I do. I do line work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some people are really good at shading. I, I, I'm, some people are really good at cooking too, but uh, <laughs> cool. Do you find that um, a lot of your NYU students want to um, be like you? I mean, that's kind of the whole thing you were talking about. But if they're doing digital drawing and software and performance, there must be a lot of overlap. You know, that's a good question. You know, do do my NYU students want to be like me and? And I guess the answer is like yes and no. They want to be like me in the sense that I'm being me. Um, but a lot of my students will come up to me and, and say, Chantel, thank you. This is the only class that really allows me to be myself. This is the only class that really allows me to push the ideas that I have. Um, so I, I feel like you know, the class that I have is really supportive in uh, letting my students be themselves, and it comes out in their work. So even though um, we all have the same brief, and I'm given the first demo of, you know, this is how you could use these components on software together, the final work that we get is so different. It's so, so different. And if anyone's curious about that, I, I'll happily show you some of the work that my students are doing. Um, my class is called Drawing on Everything, um, because I draw on everything. But it's a, a mixture of drawing and performance. And for their final pieces, they, they make a performance piece. Um, but the roots are based in drawing somehow. All right. Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, with with these very large drawings, or um, with most drawings, uh, it's, it's completely random. You know, I might start here, and, and then I'll go here, and, and then I'll go here, and, and then I'll go back here, and I'll keep jumping around and, until it almost feels finished. And when it almost feels finished, then I'll pull it out and kind of connect all the final pages together. And I feel like I do this, or I did this at this time, because um, just having one piece of paper, it doesn't keep my attention long enough. I'm very easily distracted. So when you have the chance to jump around, as you do, like I jump here, and I jump there, and I jump here, um, by using this kind of medium, it allowed me to jump everywhere and kept my attention. Um, so I, I don't think I ever started here and, and, and finished there. All right. No more questions? Uh, no, not, there's some good questions there. All right. So um, as some of you see, there's a, a big piece of paper up here. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking for some music. So when I like to draw, I, I like to have music on. You know, music is, gives you that little extra spring. And you know, as you saw with some of the earlier uh, visuals that I did with the, the avant-garde music or the noise music, I really liked how that affects the drawing. You know, it, a, a good way of finding out who you are is to draw to music that you really don't like. Um, for some people, that's country and western. Maybe, sorry, I'm in the wrong part. Of it. <laughs> For some people, that's death metal. <laughs> um, but you know, when you draw to music that you don't like, uh, you, you do tend to switch off, and, and, and you do tend to focus more on, on the music itself. 
I'm not going to draw to music that I don't like right now, though. Um, but I am going to draw to music just because it gives me that little extra spring. So Pandora is always good for that. And uh, I, let's say, you know, if some of you think that you can't see, can we pull on some lights or something and, and get a bit closer? Yeah. Okay, so when I'm, when I'm going to draw, I have no idea what I'm going to draw and, until I draw it. So, you know, here we go. Um, I think I might try two pens to start off with. So it's normally good just to fill up the paper as much as you can to start off with. Come closer, Mr. Star Wars. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Someone shout out a name. Yeah. Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Crane. Connor, C O N N E R. C what? C. There you go, Lisa. Up. <laughs> I've got you, Orlando. <laughs> oh, yeah, L A N. -E L A N. Yeah. E -L. Liz, L I what? Z. Oh. Zebra, did you mean? <laughs> Alex? C 
See, I, I, I draw, I don't spell. Jam? You can tell I like faces today. I'm not sure I'm finished yet. Any last names? Uh, Leslie. So before I finish, I'll just keep looking and seeing if I can fit any more faces in there. Some birds. Some. There we have Luke in the house. Jeff what? Jeff, you are. <laughs> All right, I'm finished. <laughs> So it's always interesting for me to see what happens. You know, like I said, uh, I have no idea what I'm going to draw and, until I draw it. And um, it used to feel like the, the pen knows where it's going, and I just got really good at following. Um, and now the more that I draw, and, and the more I draw on a, a bigger, bigger scale, and I step back from some of these pieces, I'm like, wow, it, it looks like it always existed. And I feel like, in a way, the work does always exist. And I've just found, or, or, or as creatives, we find ways of pulling this stuff into this kind of existence from somewhere else. So I, I do feel like the work has always existed, in a way. Cool. All right. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>